All right, all right. I'm back at it today. We are in Las Vegas. Well, not really. I'm in Belmar, New Jersey, but we have a special guest, Lance Growlick from Ion Franchising out of Las Vegas. Good morning, uh, Lance. How are you today? Good morning, Tom. How you doing? Good. 11.52 here, so that means it's 8.52 by you, and I'm sure you've been up and at it for a couple hours already. Absolutely. I have a lot of East Coast clients that want to talk early. I typically start at 7 my time. 7 your time. Do you do you cut out a little early, or are you still going till the end? You know, today I think I'm done by 4, so that's fantastic. I can hit some admin work before happy hour. There you go. Perfect. Do the admin work before happy hour. Otherwise, you don't know what you're going to be, what kind of data entry you're doing after that. So Lose my productivity right out the window. So you, you grew up not too far from me. We grew up probably 15, 20 minutes, depending on the traffic on the southern yeah. state uh, and, um, and, and Merrick Road there. But So <laughs> a born and bred Long Island, uh, you know, born in Brooklyn, moved to the island. But now you're out in Vegas and you've been out there for the last 10 years. Let's 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 hit it for the for, for the for the guests. So, you were in the fi family business uh, and yeah. multiple family businesses. Yeah. So uh, the, the sort of the quick backstory. I thought I was going to work on Wall Street for Dad. Dad's company ended up being the largest over-the-counter trading house on Wall Street, and uh, I was groomed for that throughout high school, um, college, during college years, and after college. I started doing it and I, you know, I thought to myself, do I want to sit in this type of office environment my entire life? It would have been great money, but I said, there's got to be something else. And I'd worked in bars and restaurants throughout high school and college. And I thought, you know, thought about that. And then I got tempted when Uncle Steven called me and said, I heard you're bored. I want to build a billion dollar restaurant franchise group in Arizona. Why don't you come out for a visit and see if you like it? And I got coerced. I got dragged away. He was a, a, originally from Brooklyn and he was a, a, a tech guy before anybody knew what tech was. That's another story. Mm -hmm. And I uh, did, did incredibly well. And we started with four TGI Fridays restaurants. I was always obviously following his lead, just got my economics degree, just out of college for about a year. And uh, said, this is exciting. I get to learn everything from him. So he acquired four locations for TGI Fridays in like 1989. Wow. And then there was a lot of acquisitions in other states, cities. And in addition, we built a ton of stores ourselves. And before you knew it, five years later, $225 million a year. I don't know what that is in today's dollars, Tom, but it's probably 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 700 million or so. <laughs> wow. That, it was that's, crazy. That's impressive. It was great being a part of it, but I got the I got bit by the franchising bug, I guess you can say. And after about five years, when Uncle Steven went back to Asia to go build another tech company, uh, I said, you know, I'm out of here. This was great. And I went to Vegas and I ended up consulting and eventually opened a, a brand called Wingstop. I became a multi-unit franchisee of Wingstop. Uh, I was president of the Franchise Advisory Council. I was a partner in Krispy Kreme Donuts in two states. I created my own donut brand years ago called Pink Box Donuts. Started that from scratch with a partner. Uh, so after doing all that, fast forward, I became a franchise broker. Didn't know what the heck a franchise broker was, but when I thought I was going to semi-retire, and by the way, my favorite quote ever that I learned through a lot of old men that did well Put yourself in a financial position to retire and don't. It's much better if you do something and you're active your whole life. Yeah. So I you learned nice that. When you have the freedom to make the decision, not that the decision makes you. A hundred percent. And that is exactly it. So I felt that while I had family support and I had my own basis for knowledge, I made a lot of mistakes with businesses and partners. That's how you I didn't, learn. Exactly. And, you know, the old expression, you fail forward, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I realized as I was looking for something to do after getting out of all these operations, I had a bad uh, divorce. I'm happily married now for 14 years. The second time. Congrats. For, thank you. First wife was the practice wife. Second wife is the perfect wife. But bottom line is I wanted to finally give back and help people because 
I didn't have a lot of help and support uh, really in hindsight in launching my businesses. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, made a lot of mistakes. So as a franchise broker, I help people, I help guide people into the world of franchising. And, And the best part is I get paid like a recruiter. So the brands pay me and people are not paying me any sort of commission. That's great. I'm a, fr- I'm a free advocate. There you go. And now I'm sure that you are working with a lot of brands because a lot of franchises are looking to expand and looking to get, you know, find the right, you know, franchisees for the locations. How many, yep. approximately how many brands are you working with now? I work with over 900 brands in virtually every industry. And funny story, this morning <laughs> I was talking to a guy on Long Island He's like, look, I got all the money. I want to do something in quick serve restaurants. Can you find me a Wendy's between New York and New Jersey? And it's funny because Wendy's just emailed me before, you know, before the call, Eric from Wendy's, like we have room uh, in, in pockets. So that's what I do. I play matchmaker. Some people have an idea of what they want and uh, most people do not. Yeah. You know, the, and there's, I think people, I think the average person thinks more of uh, the quick service and the, the restaurants, but there are a lot of other franchise type yeah. businesses. And I'm sure that you're working with other um, brands outside of the franchise. What are some of the industries that you focus on? Because I mean, again, I know that you got the quick yeah. service. Yeah. And, and by the way, obviously the retail brands, the quick serve, the great clips and super cuts <laughs> and all those brick and mortar retail based franchises are, are visible. So people see those all the time and understand that. Mm-hmm. But you're 100% correct. I mean, home service brands like, you know, roofing brands or air conditioning, electric electricians, handyman, uh, all of those, the home service sector, window coverings, flooring, amazing, amazing. And, and people that didn't even think about that, the pandemic hits and everybody's remodeling their houses. Home services is hot. Another one a lot of people don't know about, uh, unless they've had the unfortunate uh, circumstance like I have, both my parents are now gone, Uncle Bob is gone. One of the things that they have in common is home care Mm -hmm. uh, franchises or AIDS or companion care, as it's called. Huge industry. Every day, another 15,000 Americans are turning 65. They're calling it the silver tsunami. And... Some, you know, people do not want to be in an assisted living facility. They want to be at at their house, apartment, condo. They want to be using their remote control, uh, making a grilled cheese sandwich. Their remote control is better. You know that. (laughs) Companion care. It's not even medical. It's it's non-medical home care or companion care. It's a hot industry. I know people that invest $150,000 to get a territory, and, and you're making... 400,000, 500,000. I know of a guy that's netting a million dollars a year on a $150,000 investment. Wow. That's that's wild. Crazy. That's great. Good good but return. Good numbers business, on that one. Absolutely. Business services, uh Schooly Mitchell is a great uh franchise. You're talking expense reduction. Mm-hmm. They'll go negotiate with all your vendors and they'll keep 50% of the savings and you'll get paid residual income. Savings. Uh, it's 50% of this. Well, it's technically you get paid the savings for three years. So as you, as the customer is paying the bill, the business is paying the bill, you get 50% of that savings for three years. Wow, That's great. Yeah. So you don't need a lot of clients to make a lot of money, but it's a win-win for businesses because most businesses don't know how to negotiate with their vendors. They might be good at building sales. But expense control is a is a whole different animal for a lot of them. Two different but, uh, skill sets. Absolutely, absolutely. But I truly have multiple franchise brands for everybody. But when somebody comes to me, you know, Tom, like you, they have personality, interpersonal skills, communication skills, any kind of success at a job. Uh, it's not so much about passion. Remember the old days? Everybody was felt they had to be passionate about something. I love kids, so I have to work with kids. That's not how a franchise is. If you anybody out there, we all saw the founder, the Ray Kroc story. Mm-hmm. It wasn't people didn't get in the business because they liked hamburgers. Everybody likes a hamburger, but they got in the business because they saw it was a system and a and a way to make money. 
<laughs> and that's really what franchising is, is a system to make money. There's a lot of misconceptions, though. You don't have to be a millionaire to own a franchise. Yeah, yeah, for McDonald's. But I have tons of brands that are under $250,000. Tons of, of great brands under two fifty, dollars And the government gives us SBA loans. Put down your 20%. Mm -hmm. um, I have people that are partnering to get these deals done. I have people pulling money out of their old uh, 401k. I just did that for a guy, a, a 401k rollover. Um, wow. There's a lot of ways to do it. A lot, a lot of uh, different financing options, huh? And you help a them lot with of, that too? I help them with everything. I have a lot of great lenders. I certainly have my favorites. I have a guy that just got approved for a $350,000 loan, another guy a $250,000 loan. Um, people are pulling money out of their their home equity line, people that have owned business um, homes for years and have a lot of equity. Um, you know, look, at the end of the day, buying a business is like buying another home in a way. You're going you're gonna to build equity. The difference is when you go to sell, you can sell a franchise for a nice multiple. Three to five times cash flow or EBITDA is typical. Um, and, and, you know, people get to learn if you had a W2 job your whole life and you've never owned a business, you now have write-offs you never had before. Sure. It's a whole different world. W2 versus, uh, you know, owning a business in, however, if it's a right, you know, a non-franchise or a franchise or, you know, startup or you bought an existing, it's a whole different, uh, animal. What's your take on owning a business that you start from the ground up versus franchising? I mean, franchising yeah. has a different system. So Give me your thought on that. Yeah, well, there's, I call it, uh, really, there's three different pieces. Number one, besides owning a franchise and just starting one from the ground up that's proven like I did with Krispy Kreme and Wingstop, I did create Pink Box Donuts from scratch. The hardest thing ever is creating something from nothing. And most people don't have an original idea that really needs to be born. If you're not sure of that, watch a couple episodes of Shark Tank and, and they'll, you know, basically talk about how your business is more of a hobby or you're not solving a problem that needs to be solved. So most people just are not capable or don't have an idea that is worth being born. Now, existing businesses, they're all over the place. And everybody all over the internet is talking about just buy an existing business from an old couple that don't have, they don't have the systems or technology and just improve on it. Well, it's easier said than done. I think a lot of those gurus that are incredibly successful forget how hard it is to start. You know, Tom, it's all about mindset in the beginning. I know there's a lot of people that can't get out of their own way. And a franchise gives you guardrails and it makes you, you know, make you safe. There's a process to selecting a franchise, which I can go through. But the bottom line is buying an existing business a franchise, very hard to get. Most of the best franchises are purchased by existing franchisees before yeah. they hit the public market, so to speak. So the, to, the public never gets to see half these off-market deals. No, no. But buying an existing independent business can be fantastic for people if you can get it and you have a certain skill set. While it's better than starting it from scratch because something is, is is there and built and a proven cash flow. But how do you know you're, you're still in that business all by yourself, unless you mm -hmm. hire coaches to help you and experts that know the business better than you or the industry better than you. And again, they're incredibly hard to get. I'm talking to people that are looking for existing businesses for five years plus. Yep. It, it's interesting because I've only done, I've only built my own businesses. I've never bought a business. Um, I've been in negotiations multiple times, but I've never, never panned out. And, but I've, um, built multiple companies on my own. So, you know, I always say there's a screw loose, uh, because it's, yeah. you know, if there's a math formula that tells me, you know, buying a business or buying a franchise has, you know, kind of statistical results versus starting from the ground up. But, um, you know, I think that I think it's just kind of in my DNA to do it the other way. <laughs> I got a good story I heard a couple days ago. A guy yeah. called me from a roofing brand that I represent, and he goes, you're not going to believe this. He goes, you know that our, our, our typical average franchisee is doing $4 million in revenue a year, even somebody without roofing experience. We had a guy that worked for our corporate office, he tells me, that decides to go out on his own as a franchisee of their brand. 
He's mm-hmm. already he already knows the system. Sure. This guy did a did eight million dollars in the first year. Wow, eight million dollars in the roofing business in year one. A couple hundred dollar, a hundred thousand dollar investment. Yeah, two fifty probably, maybe two twenty five. I think to start. You know what's interesting is I don't think sometimes people also equate the roof like a roofing business into a yeah. franchise system so how do you educate on that how do you tr- how do you get people to think to spend you know again you just said oh, i was it was a low one is two maybe two and a quarter 250 but like so a quarter million dollars when someone conceptually can yep. pick up a couple trucks uh you know um get licensed get insured you know start marketing and have a roofing company. So kind of give me your insights on that so that like, you know, people could think about, you know, what that two, 225, 250 is and why it's a valuable, to your point yeah. of the guy generate $8 million. I don't know a lot of roofers that are generating $8 million. Yeah, that that is that is the biggest sort of black hole. Mm-hmm. Most people don't understand the perception out there about franchises. You got to pay somebody a franchise fee to join. Why would I pay that? And then I have to pay royalties of 5%, 6% on my sales. Why would I pay that? Volume, that's why. Because when you do it by yourself, I talk to air conditioning guys all day. Uh, guy owned an air conditioning company, did 800000 a year. It took him eight years to get to that level. He said, why would I join a franchise? I said, because the average franchisee and the brands that I talk to are doing three and a half, four million million, $4 million a year. So do you think you could pay to get connected to that network? to learn their system and their marketing and pay a little bit of a royalty. Hell yeah, of course you could. Yep. Better well, better also- deals on on purchasing. But let me let me answer your question though sure. specifically. When I go through the process with somebody Tom, I ask about number 1, what is their investment level? How much cash could they put into a deal? I assume they want a loan. We figure that out. I also get to what role they want to play. This is key. And I know it sounds like an odd question, but in the old days, it was a lot of franchises. You had to be a full-time owner-operator. There's no other option. Nowadays, with technology, you can be what we call a semi-absentee owner, meaning if you have a great job or you're making a great income at least, you might hate the job, keep the job for a period of time and put a manager in place. Happens all all the time in the trade-type businesses where somebody might hire a, a GM and keep... The, they're going to keep their day job. You hire a GM that has some air conditioning experience or contracting experience. And then they go through the training through corporate, you know, through the franchisor. And then you hire a bunch of real techs and dispatcher, et cetera. But there's a system for all of it. And in the early pro- parts of the process, no doubt, Tom, some people are going to look at me like, Lance, I'm scared out of my mind. That's too technical of a business. But look, I got a buddy that owns 19 Great Clips hair salons. He's bald and doesn't know how to cut hair, Tom. That's fantastic that he's bald. That just adds to the... He, and he was scared out of his mind in the beginning. Like, why the hell would I do this business? This is stupid. Yeah. Scared and mad. And, and then he realized, wait a second. This is a good freaking business. Now he has 19 that's of sports, them. That's sports haircut, uh, sports clips. Sport clips does really well, too. They, they've, I, they, I, there's one by me in Wall Township, uh, New Jersey. Shout out to the sports clips. They've cut my hair a couple of times. I, and you know, they give you that, that they wash it for you. They give you the massage. It's, it's, you know, it's nice. It's a nice experience. Yeah, great, great clips has the technology. I go right on my app. You know, as soon as I'm done here, I don't need one now, obviously. But I, I book it on the app. Yep. They have the technology. I know I have a 15 minute wait. I time it. I show up. I get my hair cut. I'm out of there. And I think Franchises. that's one of the best parts of franchising because they have the marketing systems and, and a lot of times they have the tech stack to uh, expand past what the individual business, the individual um, barbershop is going to do. Yep. Be, you know, and again, I think there's systems like in the barber world, there's that uh, Bagaro, um system to do the booking so that these people don't need their own system. But again, I, yeah. I like the idea of the apps like – you know, like you just mentioned with with with, with, and, with and all of the all of the big home service franchises have call centers, appointment centers. It, it's it's all in house marketing. Uh, a lot of them. It's yep. it's it. You know, you have the old uh, was a Tom Cruise. You know, I, I feel the need to for speed or whatever. Yeah. You want to you want to ramp up and build a business quickly. 
That's what franchising is about. But there's a process to it mm -hmm. that I take you through. And as I introduce you to brands with your permission, you start to learn. It's kind of like dating. Everybody knows about dating. Everybody knows maybe about getting married. And that's what it's like with a franchise. But you have to pick the right franchise for you. Sure. There's a lot of boxes to check. But at the end of the process, you have an opportunity to speak to existing franchisees about their experience. And when you do that, you, you know, you learn a lot of things. Would you do it over again, Tom? You know, you're making money and everybody, in fact, I got a text message this morning. I have a, a, a power washing brand called Rolling Suds. Shout out to Rolling Suds in Pennsylvania. Rolling, Rolling Suds. Suds. In Pennsylvania. Rolling Suds. I got a guy doing three territories. Uh, he said he signs Tuesday. He just said, thank you very much. I signed Tuesday. He talked to the franchisees. He talked to the founder, went through the whole process, went through the disclosure document. They did 2.2 million last year with a net of 35% in Pennsylvania in freezing cold Pennsylvania uh, half the year. Um, and you go in with your eyes open, you know, the numbers. Yep. That's interesting. Um, now, what do you think that the, what's for you, for what's the average age of that client that's looking to franchise? Like, Great question. Thank you. So um, it was in the old days, 50 uh, ish, typical corporate guy. My friend that did great clips was right at 50 uh -huh. and typical corporate person, manager, middle management type person leaving the, the, you know, the corporate refugee, if you will, I need right. to do something better. I'm not happy exactly with my retirement. I want to do something better, but now it's much younger. Yeah. I talked to a guy this morning that was 30. Wow. The deal that's closing Tuesday, the guy's 35, 34. Well, yeah, I, think. I think in the trades, like if you're going to be the operator on that power washing uh, truck, you got to be a little bit younger. That's the start. But well, and, and that's the beauty of it, Tom. You know, a lot of people, the negative stigma on franchising, oh, you're just buying a job. The reality is the owners are not doing the work yeah. other than training. You know, the owners of Rolling Suds are not doing the power wash. Sure. Uh, you know, maybe on a rare occasion, if somebody called in and it's the beginning, you know, part of their, their, their history, it's kind of like me in the restaurants. I'd never jump on the fryer at wing stop. Although on super bowl, they always asked me and I did help <laughs> busy day. <laughs> Yo, definitely. So, yeah. But uh, that, that's, yeah. that's good. That's good information. I think that that's uh, interesting that it, that it has gone down in time. And uh, I think that that, you know, as more and more young people join, and want to have that entrepreneurial journey, it's, it's easier to be able to be, you know, to get, to, to buy into a system that works and revenue that's supported. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of people saving their money, which is great. And, uh, you know, the guy this morning I talked to, he's got $400,000 in the, in the, in the stock market and, uh, easily accessible to tap into. He's only 30 years old, doesn't own a home right now. A lot of people, it seems to be the trend. But uh, I was also going to tell you, anybody listening that is a business owner and has ever thought about you know, how to grow and scale, uh, I had a guy with a mulch company that did a fortune last year. I talked to him yesterday and without giving away his proprietary formula, because we're uh, still talking further on how to set this up, amazing business. And he's like, I heard maybe I should set up a franchise system. Well, the reason independent business owners become the franchisor is many for over the years have exited for 10 times cash flow. And, and that number is, is going up a lot. And I had a guy just exit, you know, 3 million in cash flow. His insulation business he sold for $90 million. Wow. 30 times cash flow. Home services is hot right now. Home services, restaurants are always hot. Personal care brands like, you know, European wax centers, salons we talked about, massage, whatever. You know, they're all popular. Wellness in that personal care space has never been hotter. Everybody with saunas and, you know, so many different health wellness type concepts popping up because of technology. I have one called the Tox. The tox is essentially a detox, mainly focused on women, 
and uh, it, it's like a lymphatic massage. Uh-huh. And 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 uh, they were on my podcast talking about it. Courtney, the founder, and let me tell you, this girl woman put her money where her mouth is. She did twelve corporate locations between Los Angeles and New York City before she launched her franchise system. That's great. I mean, she believes in it. Shout out Absolutely. to the Talks and Courtney. That's great. Courtney. Courtney. She's awesome. So um, also with uh, home services, a lot of uh, pr- uh, pr- private equities going into the home services. How is that? Absolutely. How is that affecting yeah. the franchise world with, 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 with private equity money? Yeah, it, it, uh, it makes it more competitive. There's a lot of hot brands that sell out quickly. Yeah. Because people are gobbling up as much territory as as they possibly can, most franchisors do have integrity, in that they're not going to let somebody unknown to them buy too much territory until they yeah. prove themselves. Because even private equity groups can screw it up. <laughs> but you know, they have a lot of money, but they not always the best operators. Yeah, there was a, a garage door brand, uh, a franchisee just exited for about a hundred million. A franchisee. Wow, great. Hundred about a hundred million, and it was a private equity group. I don't know. I think the owner, the franchisee, might have stayed in to manage yep. it and still keep a piece. But uh, there, there are a lot of big deals out there. I got air conditioning franchisees exiting for twenty million to a hundred million. Um, it's it's all about. So the the, the hot they they had the hustle. They they got in there and they operated these things, and now they're getting their you know their their their, their payout. So that's great. And now they have to find their next move. Absolutely. Some hustled a lot and others had a team from previous business that they put in place. And it's just a matter of time when you start with a few territories and then buy more like my friend with great, with my friend with great clips. He had a couple of existing great clips he was able to buy, but built quite a few himself. That's great. That's awesome. I, I love to see that expand, that business expansion. And yeah. again, in the franchise system, they know what they're getting. So when they get to second location, their fifth location, it's, it's a replicatable model. Absolutely. That's awesome. So what's pick the right brand. Step? Pick the right brand. I'm happy to help. What's your next step in this game? Can continue working with. I'm always tempted, Tom, because I've owned businesses and I'm always tempted when I see such great franchises. And I occasionally will ask my wife, what do you think about us doing this, doing this? And she literally looks at me and she says, why? You're done. You're a franchise broker. You make great money doing this. You got plenty of investments. Why? I even have uh, some equity in a, in a brew pub chain in the Midwest that I helped years ago. And, uh, so, you know, you have to, I'm not a big believer in your why. I think everybody's why is the same. We all want freedom. We want time freedom and money freedom. That's it, right? We want to be happy. And at the end of the day, I'm, I've never been happier. Got a great wife, a great life. We take a vacation every single month. I could be anywhere and everywhere. Um, she goes to an amazing franchise gym concept. That's the best concept I've ever seen in my life. It's called Body one Point. More free shout out for the for the for the day. You got it. Well, it's a it's a good tip for the listeners. Besides a, a shout out, Body Twenty. It's an EMS concept, electromagnetic stimulation. It's a twenty minute workout that feels like a two and a half hour workout. My wife tells me every day, after she works out there three days a week, she says to me, "I don't know what I would do without Body Twenty. This thing shout changed out to my body life." Twenty today. <laughs> but it's just an example of another great yep. franchise, $400,000. So I want to do some of those. My wife's like, I love it. I just want to work out here. I don't want to invest in that. We don't need to do that. Cause then you're going to have me work. And yeah. I was like, well, she yeah, knows, she knows you. you've been married 14 years. She knows, she knows your antics. So <laughs> I'm glad though. I'm glad we got to connect because um, I think that the franchise world in, in the world of hustle and grit is a great avenue for some people. And um, as we wrap up today, I want you to tell people, tell the listeners where they can find you online, your website yeah. and your social media so that uh, people can continue to uh, learn more about what you're doing. Yeah, Instagram is a good place. You can DM me grit and I'll send you my free assessment. It's my franchise finding formula, uh, a scientific 12 minute 
uh, assessment for you to determine, you know, what brands might be best for you. It's a great, great tool. Uh, LanceGralic.com. I'm all over LinkedIn and I'm, I'm, I'm over, I'm on everything, everything, Tom. All right. So this was great. Uh, and I'm glad that you, uh, tend to DM grit. So, you know, kind of tie it back to here. So this was awesome. Thank you. I appreciate your time today. I'm glad that you were able to uh, schedule some time with us. And uh, I look forward to continuing our conversations and keep doing great work out there. Thanks for having me. Grit is a big ingredient in franchising. Absolutely. Have a great day and nice week. You too. Thanks, Tom. You too. Bye-bye.